as having a spirit of uh, excellence. But of course, Daniel was not a soothsayer and he was not a magician. Uh, This was just the queen's way of describing him. His gifts were from the Holy Spirit. His ability to interpret dreams and and, uh, the the, uh, wonderful gifts that God had given him. So in these verses, Daniel was identified as having a spirit of excellence because of his being able to receive supernatural knowledge and understanding and being able to solve riddles and interpret dreams and explain enigmas, which literally mean un, meant to untie knots. So he could untie the knot of something that was a mystery. Why? Because of the Spirit of God that was in him. And that's the reason he was referred to as having a spirit of excellence. In, uh, let's read verse 13. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard of you that the Spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom was found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, but they could not give the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas, untied knots, Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. I want you to notice how Daniel answers the king. He says, then this king who had been blaspheming God just moments before. Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. So he was not about to receive the spirit of excellence in him carried with it great integrity. And he was not about to receive a gift uh, or a, a blessing from this man who had been blaspheming God, the God of Israel. Amen. Well, anyway, he interprets that what was on the wall was many, many tekel oops, or zin. And uh, th- that really means, mena is like, uh, means 50 shekels, and uh, to number was the meaning of, uh, yet many, many than tekel means to number. And uh, then oops, or zin was uh, a, a word meaning uh, to, to divide. And So Daniel interpreted it like this in verse 26. He said, this is the interpretation of each word. Many, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. And Paris, uh, your kingdom uh, has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. That's in uh, verse 28. So uh, this spirit of excellence caused him to uh, give this king exactly what the Spirit of God was giving him. He didn't play politics with the king and he wasn't, even though this man was the king, he was not pleased with the way he was blaspheming his God, blaspheming our God, the God of Israel. And so, if a person truly has a spirit of excellence, even the heathen, the world, will know that it is there because of the Spirit of God. And when you go through the book of Daniel, uh, Daniel always gave glory to God uh, whenever he would be called on to interpret a dream or a vision. He always said, it's not me. And he would tell the king like he told King Nebuchadnezzar one time, well, this can't be done by men to interpret your dream. Men can't do that. It's only by the Spirit of God that this dream can be interpreted. And so he was always quick to give glory to God and a spirit of excellence always gives the glory to God. Today the world has confused uh, wisdom and excellence with intelligence. It It thinks it can measure wisdom with an IQ test. But true wisdom, excellent wisdom comes through the spirit of God. There are many people in the world today with high IQs but zero wisdom. They have sadly missed the source of excellence in wisdom. They don't have a a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. They missed the truth 
of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, I think the, some, one of the greatest mistakes that's made in education today is to assume that intelligent people are automatically good thinkers. High intelligence does not ensure effective thinking. Amen. Let me give you an example. Ted Bundy was considered, uh, have a, a, you know who he is, a serial killer, had a very high IQ. But how many of you uh, realize that his thinking was messed up? <laughs> He killed many, many people, even though he was a very intelligent man with a high IQ. The Unabomber, they said, you know, that he is, was like a genius, yet his thinking was to destroy and kill innocent people. So any, even though he was very intelligent, he was not wise and did not have a true spirit of excellence in him. Uh, let's go to Proverbs chapter 9. You getting something out of this? If you are, say amen. If you're not, say oh me. All right. I didn't hear any oh me's. That's good. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. You know, I, I was blessed when I, we were on the... Uh, well, full gospel businessmen, years ago, they had us on their speaking tour after I got saved. This was back in the 80s and on into the 90s. And we went to, uh, I don't know how many hundreds of full gospel businessmen dinners. We spoke at state uh, conventions and so on and so forth. And one of those meetings, another man that was on the platform, he was the pilot for General Douglas MacArthur. And, you know, the great general in the Pacific uh, campaign in uh, World War II and then beyond there, that is war as well, uh, considered one of the greatest generals in the history of our country. And interestingly, you know, there was a movie on TV uh, recently that I saw on Netflix that was about uh, the life of General Douglas MacArthur, and I flipped on it, and I could tell after five minutes they had veered from the character of the true man that Hollywood does so many times. Because this man who was the pilot for General Douglas MacArthur said that Douglas MacArthur read the book, all, the Bible, all the time. He said he'd be flying him around place. He'd look back there and he'd sit there just reading the Bible. He said the man read the Bible all the time. That's where that spirit of excellence came from. He had a relationship with God and he was filling himself up with the Word of God at all times. <laughs> he said he was a tremendous man of God, a man of faith that uh, was a true believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is one of the great heroes of our nation. We need more heroes like that today. That's the kind of hero we need to turn the, our nation around. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Uh, Omar Bradley, another great a general and a hero in American history during World War II. He said the world has, even in his time, he said this, the world has achieved brilliance without conscience. Ours is a world of nuclear giants and ethical infants. You know, uh, there, there's a lot of truth to what he said. You know, we need a spirit of excellence it needs to begin with us. You know, we're always talking about every, but it needs to start with all of us individually. We need to have it in our families. We need it uh, in our nation. We need a return to the spirit of excellence. Uh, let's turn to Acts chapter 4. If you'll turn with me there in the New Testament. Acts chapter 4. And Peter and uh, John, they had, God had used them in the healing of a lame man who had been lame from his mother's womb and had been laid in the front of the gate called Beautiful. This is in Acts chapter 3. And God did a great miracle and instantly healed that lame man. And um, I mean, they had a, a revival. <laughs> but the religious crowd were not too happy and they brought him in before the religious, brought them in before the religious uh, council and uh, mostly what they told them was, don't teach in this name, you know, the name of Jesus anymore. But when they stood up, uh, you, you know, when, and Peter began to talk, and, and they began to hear him, uh, 
he sa they said in verse 13, well, the Bible says in verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. You know, they, they could see the same spirit of excellence in Peter and John that Jesus had because his spirit was in them. And so even though, isn't it interesting that uh, I believe the Lord used this as an example for all of us. These uh, first apostles were not highly educated people. They were just ordinary uh, men and women like we are uh, in this church. Yet God used them to shake the whole world, to turn the world upside down, <laughs> as one verse puts it in the book of Acts, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they did it, let me tell you, they did it with excellence and they did it with power and they did it with love because they were full of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And so, although they didn't come out and say it, they really marveled because they recognized that these uneducated and untrained men were of an excellent spirit and they were bold, they did not compromise. The spirit of excellence does not compromise spirit principles and beliefs to suit the world. It is not politically correct. A person cannot have the spirit of excellence and be politically correct all the time. It just, the two do not go together. Uh, Dorothy Sayers has said, it is not the business of the church to adapt Christ to men, but men to Christ. Can you say amen to that? You know, today, I, 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 I'm sorry to have to say it, but we've got too much going on uh, in the church world where the uh, church is being adapted to the world rather than men being adapted to Christ. And there's got to be a change in that if we want to see a turnaround in our, this great nation that we live in. It's got to come through preaching the truth and the Word of God going forth. Forth. A person with a spirit of excellence has uncompromising wisdom. Let's go back to uh, uh, Daniel chapter 6. Go back with me to this wonderful example of Daniel, beginning in verse 1. Daniel served under several kings in uh, Babylon. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, We shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it again against him concerning the law of his God. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to him, King Darius... Live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree. Uh, sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in the, his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. I, I love that kind of spirit of excellence, don't you? Don't you love that kind of faithfulness? That kind of wisdom that does not compromise one's beliefs 
in God. The fact that Daniel refused to stop praying to God shows that he knew the source of his wisdom. Abraham Lincoln said, I have been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My wisdom and that of all about me seemed insufficient for the day. Folks, we need God's wisdom. Amen. So Daniel uh, was a man of an excellent spirit. A man of an, or a woman with an excellent spirit will be faithful to those in authority over them unless it involves a violation of God's word or of his covenant with God. And this was the kind of man Daniel was. He was faithful to those kings that he served, but he would not be unfaithful to his God and to the word of his God, who is our God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, even in his early days, uh, when he was a young man, go to Daniel chapter 1, when he was a, a young man uh, in verse 8, and they were, had been... Uh, taken captive and transported from Judah to, uh, 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 to Babylon. And verse 8, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the story is that he talked the eunuch, you know, please don't cause us to violate our vows. It sounds like, it reads like he'd probably taken a Nazareth vow and also some of these foods probably were foods that were not in the Levitical law. And so he was not going to uh, violate his covenant with God. And God blessed them and, and they looked better after the 10 days <laughs> They looked better than the other kids who had been eating all this rich food and all. Uh, the, the, they looked healthier, looked uh, smarter, and, and had more favor than the other young men. Also, by the way, going back to chapter 6, he did get thrown in the lion's den. I assume probably all of you already know that story. But God stopped the mouths of the lions and spared him. And the men who laid that trap against Daniel, this, you know, this... Daniel, the man with the spirit of excellence, those who laid the trap against him, they and their families were thrown into the lion's den and God did not stop the mouths of the lions. They were all destroyed. That reminds me of a proverb that says, uh, whoever digs a ditch will fall into it and he who rolls the stone will have it rolled back on him. That was certainly true of those that came against this man of God. It reminds me of another proverb which says, there is no wisdom or understanding or knowledge against the Lord. The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance is of the Lord. And I'm telling you, when we just decide to put our faith in God and not to compromise our beliefs to suit uh, uh, perhaps favor with someone we need favor with, when we realize that the most important person to have favor with is Almighty God, I believe with all my heart uh, when, we, when we come through that. It's not to say we won't have tests, not to say there won't be persecutions, but when we come through that, We'll come through it blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's turn to 1 Corinthians, back over to the New Covenant, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. Uh, uh, in chapter 12, Paul is talking about the gifts of the Spirit, and he talks about the nine supernatural gifts of the Spirit. And then he says in verse 31, but earnest, earnestly desire the best gifts. So Paul is telling us that we should desire the best gifts, the gifts of the Spirit. But he says, yet I show you a more, a more excellent way. And then there's this chapter 13, 1 Corinthians 13, which we call the love chapter, this great chapter on love that uh, Paul wrote. And he points out that, you know, you can uh, do, give prophecies and tongues and interpretation of tongues and you can move in the gifts of the Spirit, but if you don't have love, you're nothing. And you don't accomplish uh, anything. And so... Uh, then he says in verse, so he's, verse 14, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So, you know, a person cannot have a spirit of excellence if he does not walk in the way of love, the excellent way. Amen. <laughs> this agape love that Jesus introduced to the world, 
He said a new co in John 13, 34, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, uh, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you're my disciples if you have love one for another. So he gave us this new directive. This, he introduced this new kind of love. The Greek language had to come up with a new word to describe it, agape. It didn't appear in the classical Greek until the time of Christ. And uh, he defined it by the love that he displayed to humanity when he went to the cross. He said, greater love is no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. And so uh, if we're going to have a spirit of excellence, we need to walk the excellent way of love. Uh, you know, personally, I shy away. Of, you know, he says, pursue love and desire the spiritual gifts. We should desire the spiritual gifts. But listen, if we want to see the spiritual gifts moving in our ministry, we need to pr pursue love follow after love, and we'll see the Holy Spirit manifesting in our ministries. I'm convinced of that, and I've seen it. How many times did Jesus, does it say in the Bible, Jesus was moved with compassion? And then you see following that, miracle after miracle, because he was walking in that excellent way. I personally shy away from ministries that do not exhibit love. Even if they appear to be extremely gifted I want to receive from a spirit of excellence. And if that love is not there, that spirit of excellence is not there. That excellent way is not there. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 again describes the pursuit of excellence in ministry. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. In ministry, this means really caring for those you minister to and wanting with all your heart the best that God has for them. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of God that does not return void. Thank you, Lord God, that your word says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In Romans 10, 17, Lord, I pray that our faith has been built up as we have uh, heard your word tonight, Lord. I pray, Lord God, there's in, been an importation of excellence in this congregation and for those that are watching by internet. And uh, Lord, I just thank you for the return of the spirit of excellence to all believers everywhere through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And also, Lord, uh, as we're remind, we remind ourselves and others so many times, uh, we, we uh, need your word, Lord. And I'm re reminded of that uh, Psalm 119. Uh, beginning in verse 9. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Do not let me uh, wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so, Lord, we thank you that the word of God has gone forth tonight in Jesus' name. And, uh, Lord, I pray that with this word tonight there's been an importation of excellence by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And I want to ask everyone here with your heads bowed, eyes closed, in an attitude of prayer and with a reverence for God, just to look into your heart and ask yourself this question. We also ask the internet audience to do this with us. Ask yourself this question. Have I really surrendered my life to Jesus Christ? Do I know that I know that I know that He's my personal Lord and Savior? Let me tell you, Jesus took our judgment on the cross at Calvary. He's done the hard part. God the Father accepted His sacrifice for us by raising Him from the dead. All He requires of us is a choice, a decision to turn away from the way we've been living and to turn our hearts over to Jesus Christ and to invite Him in. Listen, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that He's knocking on the doors of the hearts of unbelievers. He's knocking on the, the, heart, the door of the heart of every man and woman on the earth that doesn't know Him. He wants to come in. All He requires of you is to open your heart up to Him and receive Him as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you're saying, that's what I need to do. I, I want to get this settled. I want to accept Jesus. I want you to lift your hand up high. Just lift it up high, then you can put it back down. Whether you're in this church tonight or whether you're in the congregation that's watching by Internet, if you're watching by Internet, God sees your hand wherever you are. Once again, just lift it up high, then you can put it back down. Let's all stand to our feet. And uh, I want to invite all of you to say this prayer with me, even if you've been saved for many years. 
to encourage that person within the hearing of our voices that may be saying it for the first time. Also, if you'd like to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ tonight, this can be your prayer, rededication. So let's say this together. Internet audience, say this with us. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. I invite you to come in to be my personal Lord and Savior now and forever. In Jesus' name, your name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. And, uh, if you're watching by internet and said that prayer, if you're uh, on the website, glorychurch.com, there's a, a praise report button. If you would click on that and let us hear from you. We just want to rejoice with the angels in heaven over what God is doing in your life. And we want to pray over your life. And also we have seven free books available to you uh, online that are downloadable. If you'll click on that free books button, you'll receive instructions on how to get them absolutely free of charge. And uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. The service is not over with. But, but, uh, so stay with us for a little while longer here. You may be seated. And we just want to invite any that need prayer uh, to come down to the front here. And we're going